This lesson is designed to teach us about the person and work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. We cover aspects of the Holy Spirit's work such as being filled with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. All right. And I was uh, one of those trips just uh, uh, sitting in the airplane and uh, uh, the, the, the aircraft was just taxiing off from the uh, terminal, getting ready to, and you know, getting onto the runway, about to take off. I was just looking out the window and uh, just thinking, you know, it's letting thoughts run through my mind, just thinking, you know, what is it that causes this huge aircraft to soar? What is it that causes such a huge thing to take off and go into the air, uh, fly? I was just thinking, you know, it's all about the wind. It's all about the wind. It's the air that actually lifts this huge thing up into the sky. And it's just the flow of air, the, uh, the airplane. Of course, there's a thrust and there's a pull of the air and the air... The way the air flows around the wings, it causes low pressure on the wings and gives it a thrust. And this huge thing actually begins to fly. I just began to connect it back to our experience with the Holy Spirit. I was thinking, you know, there's a lot that you could do with the wind or air. If you want, you could just breathe. And I think all of us are breathing, so we just breathe. That's one aspect of what you could do with the wind. Or if you want, you could enjoy the breeze. The wind blows and you experience and you enjoy the breeze, the blowing of the, the wind. But unfortunately, if you lock yourself up in a little room, close all the doors and windows, there could be a really nice breeze blowing all around you, but you're not going to experience it. It's not that the wind is not blowing. It's just that because you're in that closed room, you're not experiencing the wind of the Spirit or the wind that's blowing. But you can do more with the wind if you want. You could use the wind to help you sail the seas. You could set your sail to the, flow, to the blowing of the wind and you can navigate through huge oceans and seas. If you want, you could do more with the winds. You could actually generate energy from the wind that you could use in so many ways. And if you want, you could still do more with the wind. If you can pull into the wind, you can actually get aeroplanes to fly. It's the same wind that you're using to breathe. It just matters on how you engage with the winds. Interestingly, in the Bible, both the Hebrew and the Greek words used for the Holy Spirit or spirit are literally translated wind or breath or air. In the Hebrew, you have the word ruah. In the New Testament, you have the word pneuma, the Greek. Both simply mean winds or air. You got the first slide. Um, they mean air, wind. And how you engage with the wind of the Spirit, with the blowing and the moving of the Spirit, is entirely up to you and me. If you want, as many of us as believers, we could just restrict our engagement with the wind of the Spirit to just breathing. I just breathe and live. And that's my experience as a believer. That's fine. If you want, you could engage and experience the breeze, the wind of the Spirit. If you wish. Or if you stay in your own closed room, you will miss even that. But you could go further. You could go on. You could harness energy from the wind. You could use it in your life. You could go even further. You can say, let the wind blow into your sail and cross great seas. Or if you want, you could go even further and thrust, pull into the wind. And if you will pull into the wind, you can actually soar into higher realms that you've never been before. Amen? 
It's all up to you and me how much you want to engage with the wind of the Spirit. And interestingly, the Bible talks about the movement of the Spirit as the wind of the Spirit. The wind of the Spirit. The wind blows where it wants and, and, and you know where it's coming from, where it's going. Uh, but you can't necessarily tell. But you can experience and so is everybody who is born of the Spirit. So this morning, I want to share a few things, not necessarily everything, but a few things on the work and the ministry of the Spirit as we continue in our talking on foundations, some very foundational truths and basics on, uh, on our Christian life. I want us to talk about the Spirit, and then we're going to take some time to pray and minister to one another. The work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. It begins even before we were saved. The Holy Spirit works in the life of the unbeliever, the, Jesus said, to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So even when we are unbelievers, the Holy Spirit is working and He's, try, he's convicting us, bringing a conviction in our hearts of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, Jesus said, this is in John 16. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because our righteousness doesn't meet up to the requirements of God. Of judgment, because the prince of this world has already been judged. And if the prince of this world has been judged, then you and I will not escape judgment. We will stand in judgment. So it is the Holy Spirit who brings conviction to the unsaved, to the unbeliever. Amen? You know, sometimes we want to force people. You must receive Jesus. Relax. It's the Spirit of God who brings conviction. You and I have to do our... some abstract force, some heavenly being. No, no, no. More than that. We say, God, you are my Father. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit inside us. Amen? But then this Bible tells us a whole lot more. Now the Bible says that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. You are temple. You and I are temples of the Holy Spirit. The dwelling place of the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16, 6.19, 
You are temples of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the temple of God is holy. And if anyone defiles the temple, him God will destroy because you are the temple of God. Now think about this. You know, you look at people outside. Uh, they spend a lot of time and effort in cleaning up the building, the temple. They want to keep the building clean, smells clean, looks clean. Why do they do that? That's an attempt to honor the one who they think inhabits the building. How much more should you and I keep our temples clean? When you make an effort to keep your temple clean, you are actually honoring the one who inhabits the temple. The Holy Spirit. Amen? Let me hear an amen. <laughs> amen. Do you know when you go to the gym, you're actually honoring the Holy Spirit? So, Pastor, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> Seriously, think about it this way. When you go to the gym, and this might motivate some of you. When you go to the gym, you are taking care of the temple of God. And when you take care of the temple... You're doing it because you want to honor the one who inhabits the temple. You can say an amen. amen. See you at the gym tomorrow. You know? <laughs> Seriously, whatever you do to take care of your body, you do it because you want to honor the one who inhabits the body, who inhabits the temple, that is the Holy Spirit. That's your motivation. That's what motivates me. Amen? Why are you keeping your temple clean? Why do you avoid contamination with the sins of this world? Why do you take care of your body? Because you want to honor the one who inhabits the body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And not only does the Holy Spirit inhabit you, but now He gives you the strength and the power to crucify the body, crucify the flesh. He gives you the strength. See, when you and I got born again, our spirits became a new creation. We were born in our spirit, born again in our spirit. We became a new creation. But the mind and the body needs to be renewed. The mind needs to be renewed. The body needs to be crucified. So here's this, pardon my usage of the word, the schizophrenic Christian. So what's a schizophrenic Christian? He's a Christian who's born again in his spirit, but his mind is not renewed. So there are moments in his life when he operates out of his spirit and he looks at things the way God looks at it. And every time he lapses into the mind, it's a mind that's still carnal. So he lapses into the ways of the world. And you can't figure him out. Because you, as a believer, you, you want to operate always from the realm of the spirit. But if the mind is not renewed to the ways and thoughts of God, sometimes you operate of the Spirit and you're saying, wow, this is the will of God, this purpose of God. You're moving in, the line, in line with God's ways and God's thoughts. Then other times you operate out of the carnal mind and you're op doing exactly the opposite and you can't understand. It's so difficult to relate. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But what must we do? We need to renew our mind. Our mind needs to change. We need to begin to think the way God thinks. Think the ways of God and the thoughts of God. And then what happens? Our spirit and our mind is aligned. Now it's easy to relate because we're all on the same wavelength. We're all moving together in the same dimension. We are walking upon the ways and thoughts of God. Now it's easy. Because we're operating out of the new man we are in Christ. So the mind needs to be renewed. And the body needs to be crucified. The body needs to be crucified. We need to put an end to the sinful deeds of our body because the body is so used to doing things the wrong way. But when the Spirit of God touches us, He helps us put an end to the sinful deeds of our body. And I'll just quote one verse. Paul talks about this in many, many places, Romans 6 to 8. He talks about it in Galatians 5. He talks about it in, 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 in um, Ephesians 5. But he says this in Romans 8.13. If you by the Spirit crucify the deeds of your body, you will live. If you by the Spirit put an end to the sinful deeds of your body, you will live. 
So the Holy Spirit helps me put an end to the sinful deeds of, of our body. I'll just share the testimony of one of our folks here, and he knows whose testimony I'm saying. I won't mention his name. But, you know, he became a believer for some time. He was attending our services here. And, but he still had a problem. He was still smoking. Right? Still smoking. Is he a believer? Yes. Born again? Yes. Would he go to heaven? Maybe, yes. Maybe a little sooner than others. <laughs> but he was just smoking. Right? That was his problem. You can disagree on that. It's okay. But he had a problem. He was still smoking. He was born again. Loved Jesus. But he had an addiction. And this is his testimony. He came one day to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now you say, will God baptize somebody in the Holy Spirit who is still smoking? Well, he did. See, I know it upsets some of our theology. It's okay. We'll just move along. <laughs> so he came one day to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Lord wonderfully baptized him in the Holy Spirit. And this is his testimony. On his way home, usually after church, he would do a spiritual thing. He'll pick up a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> but that particular Sunday, after the Lord baptized him with the Holy Spirit, he drove home. He didn't smoke. He told his wife. Didn't smoke. He said, let's see how long this lasts. A day passed by. Two days. A week. And now I think it's been some years. He hasn't had a desire to smoke. And God did it in an instant. Amen. In an instant. See how the Holy Spirit can put an end to the deeds of our body. Thank God he didn't have to put some patch on. <laughs> do all those little things we try. But in an instant God did it. He can put an end. So I want to encourage you and me. You know. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. We have to build a relationship with Him. He's a person. He's not an object. He's not a feeling. He's, not a, uh, he's a spiritual being just like God the Father, God the Son. We build a relationship with Him and He will touch us in ways we can never imagine. Break off those chains. Break off those addictions. In a moment, He can do it for us. Put an end to the sinful deeds of our body. It's the Holy Spirit, like it says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. It's the Holy Spirit who, who um, changes us into Christ's likeness. He changes us to becoming more and more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit is at work in every believer. But there's another dimension that we must move into, which, is, which Paul refers to in different ways. He calls it, being filled with the Spirit or walking in the Spirit. You read about this in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 through 21. About walking in the Spirit. About being filled with the Spirit. Here's what Paul says in Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. He says, Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the... So you and I are called to live like this. We are called to live a life that's filled with the Spirit. Now he's drawing a comparison, an analogy. He says, don't be like a drunken man who's, who's had an over, uh, overdose or uh, over intake of wine. Don't be drunk with wine. But it should be a person who is filled or drunk or intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. So we are all supposed to be, to live drunken. Amen. We're all supposed to live intoxicated lives. Under the influence of the Spirit. So that's the way you're supposed to, that's the normal way you're supposed to live. Always drunk. Amen. Now, I'm sure all of us sitting here, we could identify a man who's drunk. 
We could tell them from a distance. Why? You know, obviously, you know, there's several characteristics. First of all, he doesn't walk properly. Be like, oh, no, no, just, just, just going around like that. You could tell, man, he is drunk. Watch, watch out for him. Second, he doesn't talk properly. Yeah, and then he's got his own. He doesn't talk properly. He's drunk. He's under the influence. Intoxicated. And third, of course, we get close enough to him, you can smell it. <laughs> and he's drunk. Now that's the way it's supposed to be for you and me as believers. We are so drunk, we are so filled, we are so intoxicated in the spirit, people can tell that guy, he's drunk, he's filled with the spirit. So what are the characteristics of a spirit-filled life? Paul gives it to us right there. Ephesians 5, 18 through 21, he says, Do not be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. And here are the characteristics of somebody who is under the influence of the spirit, who is who's filled with the spirit. What is it? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ unto God our Father. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So this is how you can tell if somebody is filled with the Spirit, is living the Spirit-filled life. What is it? What's going on in your heart? Are you singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord? Are you engaged? Are you filled with that Word of God so that constantly at any time you're just engaging in that Word and making melody in your heart to the Lord? Is there a song in your heart at all times? I'm not talking about, you know, memorize Psalm. Now I'm saying Psalm 103. Your boss says, what are you doing? I'm doing Psalm 102, sir. You know, it's not about that. It's in your heart. Is there the word of God? Are you singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord? all the time? When things go good and things go bad, when you miss your flight, when you come late to church like me and the whole church sees you coming late. I mean, everything. Is there a song in your heart to the Lord? Are you happy? Are you in the word? Second, giving thanks always for all things. Is that happening? That's a sign you're filled with the Spirit. That's a sign you're living the Spirit for life. That's a sign you're intoxicated with the Spirit. Are you, are you grumbling? Man, the kids outside are making so much noise. I wish the pastor would do something about it. You know? <laughs> Complaining about everything. Man, fans are not on today. Or what is it? so hot today. Or are you giving thanks? The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. See, being filled with the Spirit, sometimes we get the wrong idea of what a spirit-filled life is. We think somebody is spooky spiritual. They say, seeing always visions and dreams. Angels are visiting them. Gold dust is falling on them. Oil is flowing out of them. We think that's a spirit-filled life. That is not. What is a spirit-filled life? Read it in your Bible. Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things. Can you do that? That's a sign you're filled with the Spirit. Amen? And third... Submitting, verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another. Are you able to walk in humility? That's a sign that you're filled with the Spirit. Or do you come in like, I'm the big boss, everybody listen to me. Listen, you're not filled with the Spirit then because it doesn't match up to the Word. The word says when you submit yourself one to another and you walk able to walk with that grace of humility, it's a sign you are drunk in the Spirit. Amen? This is the word of God. How do you know you're filled with the Spirit? Just check yourself up with this. Is there a song in your heart? Is there thanksgiving that's ascending up to God in all times? Or are you grumbling and complaining all the time? Are you walking in that spirit of humility? That's the sign. Then you do all the other things. I mean, then you have gold dust and you have this and that. That's all extras. Let's get the truth right. 
This is the sign of a spiritual life. Now, if you walk like this, then Paul says in Galatians 5, 16, he says, Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So here's the key. You walk like this. You live a life like this where you're always giving thanks to the Lord. That you're singing in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. You've got the song in your heart to the Lord. You're able to give thanks in everything and that you're walking in humility. He says, if you live this life filled with the Spirit, you know what? He says, if you walk like this, the word walk in the New Testament simply means to live habitually like this. If you live like this habitually, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will get rid of anger, jealousy, hatred, pride, which are all works of the flesh. You just get rid of it out of your life you will live like Jesus and you will manifest like he says in Galatians 5 20 to 23 you will manifest the fruit of the spirit love joy peace kindness meekness goodness self control and faith these things will be seen in your life how does it happen I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit amen and this is the realm in which you and I must dwell habitually. We are called to walk in the Spirit. Dwell in this place. This is where you're dwelling. Always. Are you with me? Walk in the Spirit. So you have asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, right now, I don't feel, things aren't going so well. I don't feel like singing a song to the Lord. Help me. He'll help you. You'll give thanks. Right now, Lord, I don't feel like giving thanks. Everything's going wrong. Help me, Holy Spirit. He'll help you give thanks. In everything. In everything. Give thanks. So Lord, right now, I don't feel like walking in humility. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me to walk in the spirit of humility. Help me to get rid of Pride and arrogance is wrong. He'll help you. And as you walk that way, you're living under the influence of the control of the Spirit and you live a victorious life. You will manifest Christ like virtues. Amen? And as we walk in the Spirit, we can also be led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is a spirit who reveals, is a spirit of revelation. He reveals to us the plans and purposes of God. So he will speak to you. He will guide you into all truth. He will reveal the purposes of God for your life. And, and he will lead you in the ways God has for you. And here are some ways you and I can tell if, um, if what we are sensing is the leading of the Holy Spirit. If what you sense from the Spirit, uh, is it up on the screen? Can you see it? Yeah, okay. If what you sense in the Spirit, you know, how do you check what, whether what you're sensing is really from the Holy Spirit? Number one, does the, spirit, the Spirit and the Word will always agree. So does it agree with the Word of God? You've got to check that. That's very fundamental, very elementary. Is Jesus glorified? If, if what I'm sensing in the Spirit is glorifying me, I can question it. But if Jesus is being glorified, then I know it's truly of the Spirit. Is it righteous because the Holy Spirit never lead me to do something wrong, something ungodly, unrighteous? And number four, do other godly believers bear witness to this? You know, especially when it's important decisions, submit it to other godly believers. What do you think about this? Because if the Spirit is in you, the same Spirit is in them, they will be able to bear witness to it. But if you're afraid to submit it to somebody else to test it, then you need to question, why am I afraid? Because if the Holy Spirit is in me and the Holy Spirit is in them and He helps us judge it, it's good. So that's how some simple tests that you and I can do to see if, if what we are sensing is of the Spirit of God or not. In addition to walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, there is also the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is what we're going to spend a few moments on and then we're going to pray for people. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, which Jesus talked about and the New Testament teaches us. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, when John the Baptist introduced the ministry of Jesus, he said, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. But during his earthly ministry, Jesus never talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He never did much on it. He, he did talk about the Holy Spirit, but he never said much about the baptism until after his resurrection from the dead. 
Then he comes into this room where the disciples are seated in John the 20th chapter verses 21 and 22. And, and he comes into that room, the disciples are all there and he tells them, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, I am sending you. And then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. Interestingly, right after that, he says, but I want you to wait in Jerusalem. This is in Luke 24, 47, 48. I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from above. You think, well, Jesus, you just breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And now you're telling them to wait in Jerusalem. What's up? What's going on? He explains this to us in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. He says, John baptized you in water unto repentance. But in a few days from now, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is the promise of the Father, which I've spoken to you about. So why did he tell them to wait in Jerusalem? To be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So what happened in the, up, in the room when he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit? They were born again. Because nobody could be born again until Jesus had been raised from the dead. So they were born again of the Spirit at that moment. But he still told them, you need to wait for the baptism in the Spirit. So they waited in Jerusalem. And he explained to them the purpose of this in Acts 1 and verse 8. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be witnesses to me. To the uttermost parts of the earth. Acts 1 and 8. So when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You'll receive power to be witnesses for me. And sure enough on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. The Holy Spirit came. They were baptized in the Spirit. They began to speak with other tongues. They, became, they bore great witness for Jesus. And you find this repeating in several other chapters in the book of Acts. In Acts 8. The believers in Samaria. They received the word and uh, Stephen came and preached to them. What was it? Sorry. When Philip came and preached to them. And uh, they believed, they received the gospel. They were, they were baptized in water. The news goes to Jerusalem. And a couple of days later, maybe some weeks later, Peter and John come to these believers in Samaria in Acts 8 and pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And it kind of repeats in the book of Acts. Acts 10 Acts 9, Saul is baptized, became, becomes Paul. Acts 10, the believers in the house of Kurn, the people in the house of Cornelius, they become believers, they're baptized in the Spirit. Acts 19, Paul goes to the people in Ephesus and, and he asks them the question, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So it was customary to ask people, have you received the Holy Spirit after you believed? In other words, have you been prayed for to receive this empowering of the Spirit? So it's, it's just part of our, of, of our walk with God, of our journey with life. That is, you're born again of the Spirit. You learn to live the Spirit for life. You're walking in the Spirit. You're led by the Spirit. But there is also the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The purpose is for you and me to receive power, to be witnesses for Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes in the baptism of the Spirit, He brings with Him His gifts. The gifts are tools that we use to serve people. I use this example often, you know, if there's some electrical problem in this building, you call up the electrician and he says, I'm coming, sir, five minutes, I'll be there. Um, you're waiting for the electrician and there he comes. What do you expect him to come with? Let me ask it again. What do you expect him to come with? Tools. You expect that him to come with tools so he can fix the problem. The same way you and I as believers, we've got our tools. It's a gift to the Spirit. We use it to bless people. We use it to minister to people's lives. The gifts of healings, the workings of miracles, the words of knowledge and words of wisdom and so on. They are tools given to us to manifest the power of the Spirit of God and touch lives. So it's important for us as believers to receive this in our lives and use these tools. Amen? It's important. It's in the Bible. How does it happen? We pray for people to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's what they did in the book of Acts. They prayed for them they, that they might be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God came. They began to speak in tongues and then they learned to move in all the other gifts and, and, and they impacted the world around them. 
And that's what we want to see. We want to see a whole church, a whole body of believers baptized in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues and moving, learning to move in all the gifts of the Spirit. Imagine what an impact we'll have on our city and on our nation. If all of us learn, and if the operation of the gifts of the Spirit are normal for everyday life, you don't have to go out some special place to see somebody flowing in the gifts. It's meant for all of us to take with us wherever there are people. Because we are there to serve people by the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. That's where we want to see the whole church, the whole body of believers move into. Where we go there step by step. This morning, I want to encourage you. You know, the wind of the Spirit. You can just breathe and be satisfied. That's fine. Or if you want, you can get out of your room and feel the breeze. Sunday mornings you come, you worship. So, wow, I felt the Spirit. That's good. But you can go further. And you can set your sail to the wind of the Spirit and let Him guide your life, lead you, take you in your journey with God. But you can go further. You can generate energy. You can receive His strength in your life to overcome and crucify the things of the, of the flesh and learn to walk in the Spirit and manifest His virtues. You can go even further. You can pull into the realm of the Spirit and soar into higher dimensions in God. It's the same wind, but how you engage is up to you. Amen? So this morning, before we close, I want to, and this is not completely necessarily, you know, the, entire, what, the entirety of what the scriptures teach on the Holy Spirit, but it's just very foundational for us. This morning, before we close, we're going to pray for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to receive the power of the Spirit, and to pray in tongues. I'm going to give some instructions. And then we are going to pray for people here. Amen. So this morning what we are going to do is this. We are going to pray for people to be baptized in the spirit. I know many of you are believers. You love Jesus. But you need to go a step further. And receive the power of the spirit in your life. We are going to pray for you this morning. And what will happen is when the Holy Spirit comes on you, He's going to help you pray in other tongues. He's going to help you speak in other tongues. You say, why pray in other tongues? I mean, I can pray in English, Tamil, Gurdu, Malayalam, whatever. Why? See, when you pray in tongues, you're praying in a language given to you by the Holy Spirit. And it's just limitless. There's a book out there on the wonderful benefits of praying in tongues, which you can take with you and just learn more about it. But very quickly, when you pray in tongues, you're praying without boundaries. Your prayer life becomes limitless. You're praying according to God's perfect will. You don't have to worry, you know, am I in the will of God, out of the will of God. It helps you overcome the weaknesses of your flesh and, and, and it builds you up spiritually. Also praying in tongues is a, is a way, God-ordained way to bring rest and refreshing. And when your body is tired, you take a nap, you go to sleep. When your spirit is tired, you pray in the spirit. It refreshes you, energizes you. It's another way to praise and magnify God. Praying in the spirit, number seven, Enables your spirit to receive the mysteries of God. It also helps you stir up the gifts of the spirit within you. So there's just many, many benefits of praying in the spirit. And we want you, all of us, to flow in it. And uh, you know, as a church, we want to equip all of us to move in the gifts of the spirit so that we could really bless our city and our nation. Amen? So nothing to be scared of. I was raised in a denominational church where we never heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so the first time I went to a place where they were praying for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was really scared because it was so noisy. It was very strange. I was waiting for it to get over so I can go home. But because I saw this truth in the Bible, I said, God, I need it. I must have it. So just in my own room, seeking God, prayed, and God filled me with the Spirit. I began to pray in tongues. And I think this was the age of 14. And... Uh, it's been a long time now. Don't ask how long, but a long time. <laughs> I've been praying in tongues almost every day. It's a real, real gift. Wonderful. And we, each one of us here can have it. So let's stand up to our feet. And I'm going to first, I'm going to call those of you who already pray in tongues. You're already baptized in the Holy Ghost. You're praying in tongues regularly. Our pastors, our life group leaders, others. I want you to come and stand up in front and just face the congregation so you can pray for others this morning. So if you're already baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're already praying in tongues, and, and you are, are just enjoying that, now I'm, we're going to have you pray for others. So I want you to please come and stand in front so you can pray for those who want to be baptized with the Spirit. Again, this morning there is no compulsion. All right? 
we just want to share this with everyone. And, and as Pastor Steve shared his own testimony. You know, it's so amazing how God does this. And God baptizes people in so many ways. One of our pastors was riding on his motorbike and he got filled with the, filled with the Spirit started praying in tongues. I remember this was a long time ago in, in, in Ecuador. We were ministering in Ecuador in a town called Rio Bamba. And I was preaching in this crusade, this evening meeting. It was on the Holy Spirit. The sermon was going live on local radio station. And uh, there was somebody listening to this sermon in ho- at home, in their home. And when we were praying for people to baptize the Holy Spirit, this person prayed in his home and he got filled with the Spirit, started praying in tongues. And he was so touched that he said, I got to meet this preacher. And that n- the next morning we were leaving Rio Bamba, we were going off to Quito, the capital, Ecuador, and from there we we're flying back to the U.S., this man, next morning, he called the radio station. He said, what is, what's happening to this preacher? They said, he's going back to Quito. And uh, he's going to preach there in a service. And then he's going. This man took the road all the way from Rio Bamba. He followed. He came after us to come and meet us in Quito. And he said, you know, this is what happened. I was listening to the radio. You prayed for people over the radio. God filled me with the Holy Spirit. Start praying in tongues. This stuff is real. Amen. It's real. God's an amazing thing. So, here are people who are going to pray for you. They already pray in tongues. Come on, others. We need some of you people here. We're going to pray for others to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, this morning, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, I want you to just come and stand in front of them. Just come and stand in front of them here this morning. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, no compulsion, but if you're a believer, you love Jesus, you say, yes, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, just come on, stand in front of them. Don't be embarrassed, nothing. Just come and stand in front of them. We're going to pray for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So just come stand in front of them. We're going to give a few instructions. Just come, just stand in front of them. Please come, please come, please come. Just come and stand in front of them. Just come. Just we'll form a couple of lines up here, right up here. Just say, and I want to be baptized, Holy Ghost. Just stand up there. We're going to start praying in a few minutes. Uh, I'll give you a few instructions, and then we'll start praying for people. So just come and stand here. You know, this is church service. This is home. Don't be afraid. Just come and form a line here. We're going to pray for lots of people today to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, to be filled with the power of God. Up in the balcony, we'll wait for you. Just come on down. Don't worry. Just form a line. Wait, don't start praying yet, please. I'll give you instructions. We'll, we'll start praying in a few minutes. You know, we're going to pray. Just come and stand here. Just stand right here. Make two lines, three lines, how many ever we need to make. I'll give you instructions, and then we'll start praying. All right. Can't just keep coming. Just stand here. Don't be afraid. What we're going to do is I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. I'm going to lead you in a prayer to, that you can repeat after me. And then these brothers and sisters are just going to come lay hands on you. Man is not the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. It is the Lord Jesus. All right? So don't look at this man or this woman. Who's praying for me? Does he have a long beard? Does he look very spiritual? Forget all that. It is the Lord Jesus who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. It's not the person praying for you. All right? We're just earthen vessels, jars of clay. It's Jesus. So you look to Jesus. He is the one who baptizes in the Holy Ghost and fire. So they're going to pray for you. And uh, we're just going to ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. All you do is say, Lord, I ask you to pour out your spirit on me. I ask you to fill me with the spirit. And I expect to receive the power of God. I expect to receive the gifts of the spirit. And uh, after you do that, just give him thanks for a few moments. Just thank him in your own language. And after that, just stop saying anything in your own language. Stop saying anything in English or whatever language you're speaking. Expect heavenly languages to come forth. All right? Expect heavenly languages to come forth. Those of you praying in tongues, I want to encourage you to pray in tongues right where you are. Pray for these people. Just say, Lord, let them experience the baptism of the Spirit. Others, if you want to come, just come and form another line behind them. We'll try to pray for as many as we can this morning. So don't be ashamed. This is home. This is the work of God. We're not embarrassed about it. We don't apologize for the work of the Spirit. We want more and more and more of His work in our lives. Amen. 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 All right, I'm just going to just pray a gentle prayer. Then those of you standing in front, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I want you to repeat it after me just to help you release your faith. And then these brothers and sisters who are standing in front of you will pray for you. They lay hands on you. They won't slap you. They won't push you on the floor, nothing. They just lay hands on you. Just pray that Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Let's all pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. You said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On my sons, on your sons and daughters, young, young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. 
Oh Lord, we just thank you that you're faithful to your word. And even this morning, God, you will pour out your spirit on everyone here. Everyone who's come. And if you're standing there, watch. If you're just, you're, you're for some reason shy to come and you want to pray right where you are, do that. Those of you watching live, you pray right where you are. God will meet you right there. And Lord, we just pray you pour out your spirit on all flesh. Everyone here just praying and asking God. For the outpouring of the Spirit on their lives. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you will baptize each one with the Holy Ghost and fire this morning. Even as we pray. We ask, Holy Spirit, you'll come with your power. Fill each one with the gifts and with the power and the gifts of the Spirit. Let them begin to speak in other tongues and heavenly languages, O oh God. Even this morning. And take them, Lord, deeper and deeper and deeper and further and further and further in you. In realms and dimensions of the spirit that we have not yet gone into. Take us, oh God. We thank you. We thank you. Those of you who want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just want you to pray this simple prayer. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. I want to receive power. To be a witness for Jesus. I receive. By faith. The gifts of the spirit. And I thank you oh Lord. This morning. I expect to speak in new tongues. Let rivers of living water flow. Help me speak in heavenly languages. We thank you Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Now everyone, just start praying in tongues. Lay hands on them. Just say, receive the Holy Spirit. Start praying in tongues. Don't be afraid. And uh, those of you who've come to receive, those who want to receive the baptism of the Spirit, you just thank the Lord for a few moments. He said, Lord, I just thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then as you're thanking Him, you just switch over to whatever language you sense coming out of your spirit. No one can teach you how to speak in tongues. This is the work of the Spirit. So you just switch over. Just begin to speak. Whatever comes out of your spirit, just begin to say that. Just begin to say that. Everybody here, pray in tongues. Pray for these people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. If you want to be prayed for, just come on forward. We pray for you. We'll pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We just bless you. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead. Just pray out. Pray out strong. Pray out in the Spirit. Just make sure everybody's prayed for. Somebody can pray for him as well. Just say, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in tongues. Whatever comes out, just, just speak it out. Just let it come forth. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, keep praying in the spirit, keep praying. Whatever word you've received, just release it out by faith. Your mind will not understand what you're saying, but your spirit is praying. It's a prayer in the spirit. It's a prayer language. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Just speak it out by faith. Church, pray out. Pray out in the spirit. You're right where you are. Stand. Pray out loud. More, Lord. More of it, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the release, God. Thank you for baptizing your people in the spirit, God. You need to open your mouth and speak it out. Those of you who have received it for the very first time, let it flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let it flow. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Church, keep praying in the spirit. Pray it. Press in loud. Pray. Pray. Yes, God. It's a prayer in the perfect will of God. It's a prayer that will re you will receive revelations, the hidden secrets of God as you pray. Rekhede, your spirit is praying. Release, release. Yes, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Ropo do ro 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 no mama da keren de ne she de 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 ne ne ne. It's a ne she lava she so ro 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 no mama da ra ne she de ke de re ne 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 ne. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. More, more, more. Yes, God. More of your spirit. Release, release. More, God. More, more, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Release, release. Every barrier broken. Yes, God. You're setting people free to soar in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Reke re 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 mama da korono she baba de hinde. Zi re 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 mama lando roba. Zi re 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 no mama da hinde. Shu to do re no mama sta de ke de re re na na. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Church, press in, press in, press in. These are your brothers and sisters. They need to. They need to. Yes. Yes, God. Yes, let faith arise. Thank you, God. This is your gift, your promise of the Father. Yes, God. Jesus, you said, "I will send the promise of my Father." Yes, Lord. They are receive the promise of the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Roko ro 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 no mama da ne ne she de 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 ne ne ne. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Every mind block be taken off. Thank you, Jesus. Step into the realm of faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All the gifts of the Spirit activated as the gift of tongue is released. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ro 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 no ma randara ne she de 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 ne 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 ne. Whatever word comes out of your mouth, those of you have received it. Yes, God. Speak it out by faith. Speak it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Anybody else? You still, you still are standing right there. Should I go? Shouldn't I? Right now is the time. I want to invite you. Come, just come and receive. This is your time. There are people who can pray for you. You will never be the same again once you receive it. Believe me. You will be set free to live holy lives. Believe me, you will have the power to overcome the the weaknesses of the flesh as you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Anybody else, you want to come and receive it? Just come. Step out of your place. You are a believer in Jesus Christ. You qualify. You are a believer in Jesus Christ. You qualify. Just come. Anybody else who wants to receive it? Just come. Step out. Just come. Yes, there are prayer warriors. They will pray for you. There are people who have received it. What you have, you can give. Only what you have, you can give. They have received it, and they can give, and they qualify to pray for you. Come, yes, my brother, come. Anybody else, just come. Yes, says church. Don't be distracted. Just whatever is going on, just you pray right where you are. Yes, we can pray. Continue to pray in the spirit. In a language, we can only pray for some time, but in the spirit, we can go on and on and on. Keep praying, keep praying. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Come on. This is for every believer. This is the teaching of Jesus. It's not the teaching of any man. It is the unadulterated, uncompromised truth of the Word of God. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is for every believer. It is for you. Anybody else? You've not received it. You come. You come. You will. You will receive it. Those of you who want to re. Baptized, who want to be re-baptized in the Holy Spirit? You can come. You want to be refilled? You come. You want to be refilled? Come. Yes, you can come too. You want to be refilled in the Holy Spirit? You come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Keep praying, church. Keep praying. Keep praying. We still have a few more minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, God. You want to receive a fresh touch from God. Yes, the touch of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. You want to receive this gift of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, God. Yes, brother, go for it. Yes, go, go, go. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You are baptizing your people, Lord. Just as you promised, just as you said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Father, yes, God. Even as they are activated in the gift of tongues, let all the other gifts of the spirit flow in them, Lord. Let the gift of prophecy flow. Let the gift of tongues flow. Let the gift of interpretation of tongues flow. Let the gift of word. 
words of wisdom flow let the gift of words of knowledge flow let the word of gift of faith flow yes god let them flow in the gifts of the spirit of god thank you jesus this is for the church today that we might impact and influence the lost world thank you jesus you are empowering your people lord to be witnesses of jesus christ you are empowering people to be preachers of the word of god preachers of the gospel of jesus christ thank you god church keep praying keep praying in the spirit you don't 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 be distracted rekhe de de ne mamalan dharano shi baba da ko do it's a nishil avasi samaran dharano thank you jesus e shi re 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 ne mamalan dharano shi baba da kende e ke re re ne 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 zibar no 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 anybody else you want to receive come on just keep praying anybody else want to be prayed for you just come forward there are there are people who will pray for you you want to receive pray just come forward and once you're prayed for once you're through you can go back to your places once you've received the gift of tongues you can go back to your place those who have received the gift of tongues you can get back to your place rekh de ne 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus yes lord press in press in thank you god release more 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 yes god release thank you god thank you jesus yes master yes god this is for your people this is the promise of the father this is the work of the holy spirit thank you god thank you god baptism by fire thank you jesus thank you lord your people will never be the same again your people will be people of power empowered by the holy spirit to do great exploits for the kingdom of god thank you jesus anybody else come sister come anybody else you want to receive you want to receive or you want to be refilled come just come this is the time don't go back the way you came in go back empowered to be a witness in this world to be a witness for jesus christ in this world we're going to close in a few minutes now just come just come just come thank you god thank you god thank you jesus keep praying keep praying keep praying church come on i don't hear you now you become slowly soft no press into the spirit press in pray in the spirit pray 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 out loud let's make a joyful noise in the house of the lord come on let's let's raise our voices come on we don't do this very often we encourage you to pray because it's a prayer that will edify you personally yes come on re 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 mama nandaro no she baba de kende everyone pressing in ye ke de ne 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 she thank you god thank you master thank you jesus more of you god yes re 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 ne come sister come anybody else you want to receive prayer you want somebody to pray for you for a fresh release of the baptism of the holy spirit jesus is the baptizer not these men and women of god jesus himself is the baptizer he will baptize you hari karen dere ne shiva bada karuno thank you jesus thank you god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you god thank you god thank you master yes god thank you thank you bere dere ne ne mama da karuno no no she de 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 ne 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 khelen dere ne shiva bada kondo zikere ne 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 mama landa no shiva bada khende Jesus you him yourself lord you you declared the spirit of the lord is upon me to to oh yes god to declare freedom to the captives to set the captives free thank you god these men and women lord they are receiving the holy spirit that is coming upon them yes god to set many lives free to set many in bondages free thank you jesus thank you lord for the release thank you master thank you god you re 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 mama randa no she baba de khende you ro koro ro no mama de khere na she baba de kondo pray in the spirit church ek de ne 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 if any one of you have a question on this whole thing you have doubts in your mind still you come and meet me right after the service i would love to talk to you you have a question about this whole baptism of the baptism in the holy spirit thing come thank you jesus thank you god thank you god thank you jesus thank you god even as they continue to pray i'm addressing the church even those of you who are watching us live if you have not made a decision for jesus till today 
you have never had a personal relationship with the savior of the world jesus christ who died on the cross for your sins and he was buried and he raised on the third day he rose again victorious over satan sin and death and you do not know this jesus in your life my friend today is your day of salvation today i declare god wants to set you free from all your sin from all your bondages and he wants to give you eternal life jesus said if you drink of this water that i will give you you will never thirst again but it will become in you a water springing forth into eternal life yes you can come and drink of this water that jesus will give you my friend if you want to make a decision to follow jesus and receive him into your life as your personal savior and lord i want you right where you're standing or right in your homes right where you are you make a decision you pray this prayer heavenly father thank you for loving me thank you for showing me that you love me by sending your son jesus to die on the cross for my sins I believe I have sinned against you and I believe Jesus took my punishment on the cross and I receive Jesus as my lord and savior I want to drink of the water that you give me Jesus that I may never thirst again that I will be fully satisfied in my spirit thank you lord for giving me the gift of eternal life freely in jesus name i receive it by faith amen friend if you have prayed that prayer if you received jesus christ for the first time in your life you've never prayed that prayer before for the first time in your life you prayed that prayer can i see your hand right where you are just indicate by saying i prayed that prayer anybody God bless you my brother I see you and God bless you here my brother I see your hand one at the back anybody in the balcony you pray that prayer and say Jesus I receive you into my life anybody in the balcony let's pray thank you God for the work of the holy spirit in this place today can i hear a church say thank you thank you God for what you have done in this place today say a thank you Thank you Lord thank you Jesus for what you've done it is beyond what we could buy or pay with our money god it is priceless god you have empowered your people with your spirit of oh god and we want to give you glory spirit of the living god we want to press in and grow in our relationship with you even in the days to come oh god and areas in our lives that needs the touch of the holy spirit father in jesus name we pray lord the spirit of god will touch those areas of our lives those weak areas be turned to strengths oh god those bondages be broken oh god that your people will be set free to soar god soar we will not be satisfied with where we are we will press in for more of you god Yes God thank you so much for you're more than willing to do beyond what we can ask or think or imagine we bless you we give you glory honor and praise in Jesus name and God's people said amen the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord release unusual favor upon you the lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace in Jesus name amen Church be blessed to live a spirit empowered life a witness for Jesus Christ amen We trust that this message was a blessing to you We'd love to hear from you You can email us at contact@apcwo.org Also visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources Thank you for listening and God bless you